Hi Year 11 and welcome to my lesson on question 2 language analysis for the exam English as a first language 0500 IGCSE. Um, so in this class then we're going to cover the basics of language analysis, looking at how to select relevant quotes, um, finding images, analysing word connotations and how to actually write that all up. Um, so. Some instructions then for how to complete this class. Um, as you watch this video, there is a worksheet that you guys need to complete as you watch um, and then submit that to me on Teams by Tuesday the 4th of February at 8pm. Um, so please notice that deadlines, if they are missed, parents will be informed. Um, you should take this work just as seriously as you would do a normal class, a normal assignment. You're going to have three assignments per week um, with corresponding classes and those classes are designed to take around about two hours. If these classes are taking you much longer than two hours to complete then please do let me know so that I can adjust my timings and try to make this more manageable. On the other hand if you find that they're not really long enough or you need more material or more help let me know and I can improve them. Um, so let's start off then just by taking a look at where to find all of the relevant materials uh, for however long we have off school. So firstly, if you go onto our Teams page and then click onto Files, you can look at the beautifully named folder exclamation mark, exclamation mark, coronavirus classes. Um, and that's where you're going to find everything uh, for the next two weeks. Um, and beyond if we're, if we're off for longer, who knows. So click on week one and then it's organised by lesson. Like I said, you're going to have three assignments per week, so three lessons per week and you go on lesson one. Here are all the materials for this week's lesson. Um, so firstly, the worksheet that I told you about is called Zero Class Instructions. That's the most important one that you guys have to have. Um, because that's what you're going to have submit to me on the assignments uh, page, which I'll show you in a second. Um, on there, you've also got the PowerPoint that I made. Um, you've got the insert, which are the texts, the question paper, the mark schemes, um, and an exemplar answer, uh, an example paragraph of the kind of thing that you could write. Um, so if you haven't already, please open up Zero Class Instructions. That's our worksheet. And when you do, it's going to look something like this. So at the top, it's going to say week one, lesson one. Um, and this here is a repetition of my instructions. Task one is simply to access the video. Um, I am going to upload them on Teams, YouTube and Yoku. So hopefully between those three different platforms, you can find a way to stream it really fast without uh, playback issues. Task two are kind of note making that you have to do as you watch the video um, and tasks. Um, so you can see it looks like this. And this is all going to match up to the video that you're watching right now. Um, then after you finish watching the video and you finish making notes, you're going to actually complete the language analysis question. Um, and you're going to type that up here. And you're also going to do some partner work, which I'll explain later. And then all of this is your assignment and that all needs to be submitted by Tuesday at 8pm. So that is the note making, that's the practice response and that is the peer feedback that's all due by tomorrow, Tuesday at 8pm. So um, once you've done that, you guys are going to submit that to me on Teams. Um, really simple, just click the Assignments tab on Teams right here. Um, and then select the correct lesson. This one is going to Week 1, Lesson 1, and you will be able to submit it to me there. If you've got any problems, if it doesn't work, please send me a chat on Teams and I can help you out. If for any reason you think you're going to miss the deadline, then please uh, send me a chat again and we can try and come to an arrangement. Um, any problems? Um, any compliments, anything that you want to say, you can let me know. Um, if you're not enjoying the lessons or you want me to change anything, like I say, please do let me know and I can do that. Um, right, so let's get started with the lesson then. 
So firstly, as always, we are going to begin with a do now. Let me move my face. Uh, we are going to begin with a do now task. Um, so you are going to figure out what are the most important words in the sentence above and why. So just underline them or highlight them. That's all on your sheet. You can find it right okay, on the do now section. What are the most important words in the sentence above and why? Um, please pause the recording now and do the do now task. So I'm guessing and hoping that you've all done the do now task. Um, let's briefly discuss them. Um, if we try to think first of all, before we even look at the words, what is our impression of Mr. Head? What is the tone? What is the atmosphere and emotion? I would argue it's quite a negative one. I think the writer is making us dislike Mr. Head. Why? Let's have a look at the words. Mr. Head is described as unimpressed and complaining, and not just complaining, but complaining loudly. So that shows that he's being quite rude, quite negative, and also he doesn't particularly care what other people think of him, because not only is he complaining, but he's complaining loudly so everyone can hear. So perhaps you could even argue he's like infecting other people with his negativity. Everyone around him has to hear all of his complaints. Um, and then the next bit, uh, this bit here, um, we can guess is a quote of what he said, what his complaints were that he was saying. Um, so he's walking around on a tour and he's talking about straggling market towns. Now, if you call something straggling, it kind of suggests that it's old, it's not really uh, very good anymore. Um, maybe it's not very busy, nobody wants to go there anymore. So he's using a really negative word to describe the market. Next, he describes the trinkets as tatty. If you describe something as tatty, it's a little bit dirty, uh, a little bit old, like you could call someone's clothes tatty and that would suggest that old, maybe some holes in and they don't look very uh, neat and tidy. Um, so we can see that the writer is creating really quite a negative image of Mr. Head just by looking at those words. Um, so next then, let's review what is a connotation. Um, so pause the video and have a think. Can you remember, I have told you before, um, what is a connotation? Please pause now and have a think. Hopefully you remembered, um, but if not, here's the definition. You do also need to write this definition down on your worksheet, so don't forget to do that. So, uh, connotation, that is what a word makes you think of or um, what ideas or emo emotions you associate with that word. Um, and a reminder that a connotation is not a synonym. Sometimes people, when they're trying to think of connotations, they'll go on thesaurus.com. They're not connotations, that's just synonyms. It, completely different. Um, let me demonstrate. So we're going to think about the connotations of the word rose. Now remember, connotations are what the words make us think of. Um, so Mr. Rigby, what do roses make you think of? Love. Love. Okay, awesome. Anything else, Mr. Rigby? Romance. Romance. Yeah, he's obviously thinking of me there. Anything else, Mr. Rigby? Thorns. Thorns. Why do you say thorns, Mr. Rigby? Because roses have thorns and sometimes love hurts. Sometimes love hurts. Oh, interesting. So we could link the idea of thorns to pain. And then actually Mr. Rigby's taken it one step th further. He's thought about the effect. Um, and the effect there is to show that love can hurt sometimes. Anything else that roses make you think of, Mr. Rigby? Valentine's Day. Ah, Valentine's Day. Anything else? England. England, oh, interesting. Why do you say that? Because it's the national flower of the UK. Ah, it's the national flower. So maybe an effect there might be to be patriotic. 
Anything else, Mr. Rigby? No, leave me alone. No, leave him alone. Okay, I think he's going to put his headphones back on now, but I've still got some more ideas. Um, I might also talk about passion. And also perhaps danger. Because like thorns, the colour red could symbolise danger, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got lots and lots of connotations. And we've also started thinking about the effect. Um, so perhaps the effect of having the rose as a romantic uh, symbol, that might be to have the effect to um, create a loving atmosphere. I think you can remember that. Really, the effect is going to depend on the rest of the paragraph, right? It depends on the context of what you're reading. So if you're reading a love story and it mentions roses, you are going to think romance, love, Valentine's Day, maybe passion. But if you're reading a horror story and there are red roses outside the bad guy's house, then you might start to think danger, pain, um, and think about the associations with the colour red and the thorns. Um, so there aren't necessarily right or wrong connotations and connotations don't always remain the same. Um, it's going to depend on the story that you're reading. So make sure that you're paying close attention to the tone and the atmosphere of the whole text um, and that will give you ideas of what to say. Okay. Moving on then. Um, so we've thought about connotations and we've reminded ourselves what they are. Um, can you remember how to actually write that down in a sentence? If you were going to talk about connotations in the exam, how would you actually do that? Um, well, basically you do it like this. Here's an example. The noun angel has connotations of purity, innocence and heaven, which shows the writer's sympathetic view towards the girl. We can see that the structure here is the word class, adjective, verb, noun, adverb, etc. And then you put your quote, has connotations of, and then ideally list three connotations, it's a good number. Um, so the um, noun, rose, has connotations of um, love, passion and danger, which shows that love has many sides to it it can be wonderful and uplifting or it can cause us extreme pain so then you put the effect there um, using this structure um, i want you guys on your worksheets to have a go at thinking about the connotations of these five words and i want you to write them up in full sentences so the words are snow twinkle clench stretch out and snarl um, the section on your worksheet in case you guys can't find it, is right here. And make sure you're writing it out in full sentences. Um, so please pause the video now and do that task for me. I'll do an awkward sip of my cup while I wait for you guys to uh, pause. Okay, so now you guys have done that task, let's start thinking about how this actually applies to the exam. Um, so this here is an example of a question two. Um, now it does come from the old exam. Um, the new exam is basically identical, except that you have to write slightly less. So whereas on the old exam, um, on the examples that we're going to look at, pardon me, um, on the examples that we're going to look at, um, it will say instead four images, right? Bear with me for one second. It will say four powerful words or images, blah, blah, blah. We are instead going to think about three per paragraph. So the old exam wanted you to talk about eight, the new one wants you to talk about six. Um, before we take a look at the question, let's actually just stop and read the extract first. Let's read the passage then, um, and remember that each passage starts with a little summary in italics. Make sure you read that, it's the most important part and it will help you to understand the extract if perhaps it gets a little bit confusing as the text goes on. Al, not AI, Al, A-L, the owner of Honey Hotel, wants to attract new business to his hotel and hopes that his competition winner will help him. So you've got Al, who owns the Honey Hotel, 
He wants to get new clients into his hotel and he's put on a competition to help him do that. So now we start. Al waited at the airport, unusual for a hotel owner. He wanted to impress these guests. Besides, they might have difficulty persuading a taxi to drive as far out as his place. Honey Hotel's remoteness meant a two hour suspension challenging drive each way. Last month, Al had advertised online images of classical architecture, legendary landscapes, and his newly extended dining room would entice tourists in more profitable numbers, he felt sure. Struggling to describe his hidden paradise, he'd hit on the idea of offering the chance to stay for free to anyone who, to anyone booking who successfully completed in less than 100 words why I want to visit. There'd been a handful of entries amongst the dozen or so inquiries he'd received. So he's put on this writing competition, only about 12 or so people have actually even applied um, and uh, they had to explain why they wanted to visit in a hundred words. Mostly mediocre, his wife had observed. This one's amazing though, she'd said, passing him the name of the winner. Really understands the spirit of the place. He agreed. Reading the winning entry, he'd been entranced by the sensitivity with which its gifted writer staged scenes of ancient civilizations and romantic journeys along half-forgotten sandy roads, conjuring a charming mirage of whitewashed walls, embroidered gowns and orange trees laced with sunlight. Al had been immediately anxious to meet the winner. M. R. Head. Correcting the poor punctuation, he'd moved Mr. Head and his wife to the best suite, sighing over the half-full booking list. Perhaps Mr. Head could be persuaded to write a glowing review for the website. The week's itinerary had been carefully, carefully planned to encourage this. Think so far about what image we're receiving of the place, of Mr. Head, um, sorry, not of Mr. Head, of Al and, and his wife, how much they care about the business, um, and now wait for the contrast. On the second morning, Al sourced ingredients fresh from the market as usual, doubling up on everything, an unnecessary expense, but he didn't want popular dishes to run out again tonight. Laden with the rainbow of produce he procured, Al worked his way back through the beehive that was the old town. Mr. Head seemed unimpressed during the tour here today, complaining loudly to his wife of straggling market stalls, tatty trinkets and bits of cloth. He'd refused even to visit the animal sanctuary or that pile of rubbish on the hilltop. At dinner, he'd scoffed at boring plans for the next day, bullying Al into including him on an excursion for a group of white water rafters who came back year after year. Other guests said they'd also enjoy a trip on the water. So finally a small coach was hired. Stay on, stay on flat water if you like, Mr. Head goaded as the guests piled into the vehicle after breakfast. I'm with the white water boys. What's Mr. Head's attitude so far? How do you feel about him as a reader? Only later did Al realize Mrs. Head had not gone too. She sat with a notebook under the palms on the hotel terrace. Al was Al worried what to offer her. The coach party had decimated the breakfast banquet. Ban banquet. Only later did Al realise that Mrs. Head had not gone too. She sat with a notebook under the palms of the hotel terrace. Al worried what to offer her. The coach party had decimated the breakfast banquet like a horde of locusts. He had only mint tea for his own elevenses, he explained. She was welcome to that. She accepted gratefully, remaining for nearly an hour sipping the tea and idly fussing a stray cat playing around her feet. What's your opinion of Mrs. Head? How does she contrast to her husband? Still later, he noticed her talking with the gardener about, the, about his bees, 
but curious to know more about the health benefits of their honey, saddened that they were threatened by farmers, guarding precious crops against other less friendly insects. Al expressed concern that the pain in her neck she'd given as her reason for not joining the others might have been caused by the pillows. He offered to change them for others less soft. No, she smiled. The pillows are perfect. The pain has gone now. Please call me Maria. That evening, Al was so busy, so he wasn't paying full attention when the coach party returned. He caught only snippets of sniggered conversations as guests re-entered the lobby, dispersing to their rooms. Told him. Should have listened. Good job the others knew what they were doing. He noticed Maria listening to one of the rafters in the corner, nodding softly, stopping only to raise her eyebrows and smile apologetically. Why is she smiling apologetically? What are they talking about? The word hospital caught his attention. Al strained anxiously to hear more. Nothing serious, a few bruises, hurt pride, told us he knew what he was doing, finished the rafter. So it sounds like her husband has been hurt going white water rafting. He was acting like he could do more than he actually could. Sorry to trouble you, Maria began, approaching the desk. It looks like my husband will need collecting. Could we stop off on Friday on the way back to the airport, perhaps? I'll sign any forms you require now. It wasn't anyone else's fault. He won't be putting in any kind of complaint, I promise. Relieved, Al received the incident form, dated and signed. Maria Rose Head. M.R. Head, he noted. Now he understood. What has he understood? Who actually wrote the winning competition? And who did he think it was? So we realised that it was actually the wife, Maria Rose, who had written that beautiful competition entry, but he had assumed it was the husband, um, and the husband has behaved very, very poorly. Okay, cool. So, now if we go on to our lesson, um, we're going to take a look at the first paragraph. So let's have a look at the question itself. It says, reread the, the, the descriptions of A, the winning entry in paragraph four, beginning he agreed, and Al and Mr. Head's visits to the market in paragraph six, beginning on the second morning. Select four powerful words or phrases from each paragraph. Your choices should include, include imagery, explain how each word or phrase selected is used effectively in the context right between 200 to 300 words so the first thing to notice is that you've got specific paragraphs do not write about any other paragraphs you get no marks for doing it so only do those two paragraphs so go back on paragraph four he agreed this paragraph here that's the only one you're going to look at there and then the second paragraph is paragraph six, beginning on the second morning. So that is this paragraph here. So when you're doing this, I highly, uh, highly, highly suggest that you actually circle those paragraphs um, so that you don't forget where you should be talking about and make sure that you ignore everything else. Um, so we're looking for four powerful words or phrases from each image, thinking about imagery and explaining how it's used effectively in the context. So take a look then at paragraph one. Let's just read it again to remind you. He agreed. Reading the second winning, reading the winning entry, he'd been entranced by the sensitivity with which its gifted writer staged scenes of ancient civilizations and romantic journeys along half forgotten sandy roads, conjuring a charming mirage of whitewashed walls, embroidered gowns, and orange trees laced with sunlight. Um, pause this video now. This is also on your worksheet. Highlight what you think are the most important words or images that really create that strong picture in your mind um, that you think you could write about. Um, so images, typically, they are about two to three words long, definitely not longer than five words, very, very rarely five words. Um, so pause the video now and underline those uh, 
images that you think are the most important. Aim to get about four or five now. All right, let's take a look at it then. Um, so let's think first of all about what words or phrases we think are particularly striking. Um, to me, the first ones that I see are the word entranced. So the word entranced makes it seem like someone has been hypnotized or that they're under a spell. Um, let me just type that up. Maybe that might suggest how magical the place is, right? Um, maybe the next word that I might look at is um, ancient civilizations. That to me might suggest um, a rich history. Um, it's quite romantic, thinking about the past, romanticize, romanticize of the past. Oh, that failed. Anyway, romanticized vision of the past. Um, next, half forgotten sandy roads. Um, again, I think that that is a really, really romantic image. Romantic image. Um, it suggests that it's secluded, special, secret. You know, it's half forgotten. It's like only you and a couple of other people in the whole world even remember that this place exists. Um, conjuring. Oh, isn't that interesting? So conjuring, that's another sort of magical world. So conjuring, you typically conjure um, a spell. So again, that's kind of related to like witchcraft and spells. Um, um, mirage. Do you guys know what a mirage is? It's, um, you know, like when you're um, in the desert and you're dying of thirst and in the far distance you can see or you imagine that you can see like uh, a lake and lots of water but it's not really there um, a mirage again is like this kind of fake image um image in your mind that maybe isn't real like what we hope to see um so maybe we could relate that to magical or fantasy Um, this word embroidered. Embroidery um, is the kind of stitching and patterns that you get in clothes, usually quite expensive clothes. So that might show the attention to detail, how special it is. Um, so this is the kind of thing that I would expect to see you guys doing um, when you're on your exam circling those words and writing some brief ideas around them of the kinds of things that they make you think of, um, of their connotations and what it might perhaps suggest. Um, so let's take a look at how the mark scheme actually puts it then. So this is what the mark scheme looks like. Pardon me, let me just adjust my screen. This is what the mark scheme looks like. Um, so it, it will give a selection of words that it thinks that you could talk about. You don't necessarily have to talk about all of these things or even any of them. As long as what you're saying makes sense, it relates to the text and it's good analysis. Um, you don't need to worry too much about that, um, about matching the mark scheme exactly. It's just there for guidance. Um, so firstly, it kind of tells the examiner what is the general effect? What is the general thing that we should be looking out for? So it says, the general effect is of a bewitching, a magical, romanticised version of the place. So it's magical and it's very romantic. Here are some of the words that you guys could talk about and this is what the exam board say that you could say about them. Pause the screen here and have a read. Okay, 
Um, next then, um, this here is the next paragraph. And um, let's have a read. On the second morning, Al sourced ingredients fresh from the market as usual, doubling up on everything, an unnecessary expense, but he didn't want popular dishes to run out again tonight. Laden with the rainbow of produce he procured, Al worked his way through the beehive that was the old town. Mr. Head seemed unimpressed during their tour here yesterday, complaining loudly to his wife of straggling market stalls, tatty trinkets and bits of cloth. Um, so same as before, it's also on your worksheet. Can you guys please uh, underline any of the most important words or images and start to think what are their connotations, what are their effects? Please pause the video here and do that. Um, so here are six general rules for how to write uh, an answer to this question. Firstly, there are no introductions or conclusion needed. You are wasting your time and you're getting absolutely no marks for doing it. It's not mentioned on the mark scheme, just don't do it. Um, next, for each paragraph, you're going to write an overall effect sentence as your kind of introductory sentence, which you're going to say the overall effect of this paragraph is to show the contrast between Mr. Head and Al and, and uh, how caring Al is versus how rude and insensitive Mr. Head is. Just one sentence, that's it. And then you're going to go straight into your specific quotes, your three images. Um, next, give the point. Um, so state the image or word that you're going to analyse. After that, go into connotations. Um, what does this make you think of? What is the most important word? Why has it been used? Next, on to analysis. What is the impact on the reader? Why is the writer wanted to make the reader feel this way? Um, why is this word or image so important? And then finally, it might not always be possible, um, but a little bit of comparison is usually quite useful. Um, so have a look if anything is being contrasted. Um, does this image contrast with another image in the same paragraph? Uh, why has the writer done this? So obviously in the exam practice that we're doing today, it is possible to do that. Um, but in other exams, it might not be possible. So don't freak out if you can't find anything to compare. Um, but if you have a look and you see something good and you're confident to talk about it, then this is a good place to talk about it and get some decent marks. So maybe I've confused you a little bit, um, but I'm now going to show you an example that should hopefully clear up any questions that you guys have got. Um, this is also on Teams if it's a little bit too small to read on here. This contrasts with a unique and special landscape with Mr. Head's completely negative view of the exact skates. Jared is really, no, I'm going to have to record that whole, whole bit again though because I'm just constantly looking at you and you can hear me laughing. Sorry. I might leave this bit in to show them. Mm. Okay. Um, so now let's read an example paragraph. This is actually the second time I'm reading it out because Mr. Rigby was laughing and distracting me in the background, being very selfish and playing on his Nintendo. Say sorry. Say sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Let's have a go at reading it out again. Hopefully not for a third time, eh, Mr. Rigby? The overall effect of the second paragraph is to contrast the caring richness of Al and local culture with the insensitive and rude behaviour of Mr. Head. Firstly, the image of a rainbow of produce emphasises the natural beauty of the market and the rich variety of foods available. The noun rainbow has connotations of being special, healthy, abundance and rare, which emphasises Mr. Head's crass behaviour and not appreciating how rare this site is. Secondly, the author then uses Mr. Head's insensitive language to show his disgusting attitude. For example, the image Tatty Trinkets demonstrates how unappreciative he is of this experience. The adjective Tatty has connotations of trash, unimportance and insignificant, showing Mr. Head's critical and dismissive tone. Finally, Mr. Head also speaks of struggling market stalls, with the word struggling having connotations of chaotic, disorganised and shabby. 
This contrasts the unique and special landscape with Mr. Head's completely negative view of the exact same landscape, making the reader feel uncomfortable with Mr. Head's inappropriate behaviour. Uh, so, this is also on your worksheets. Please pause the video now. Think, why is it a good response and label it with what you see it's doing well. So, um, let's have a look then what's good about it. Firstly, notice the structure. This is the structure that you guys should be using. So we start with an overall effect sentence. This tells us the overall effect of the whole paragraph in just one sentence. It's an introduction sentence, basically. The overall effect of the second paragraph is to contrast the caring richness of Al and local culture with the insensitive and rude behaviour of Mr. Head. I've said the overall effect, and now I'm going to give three examples that show this overall effect. Um, it's good to do it this way so that you're not repeating the effect over and over and over again. It's just a better way to do it. Then in yellow, notice the three images. Um, here, four images that I've spoken about. The rainbow of produce. Um, sorry, three images. Rainbow of produce, tatty trinkets and straggling market stalls. Then in blue, I give the connotations of one word from each of those quotes. Um, here, here and here. And then I also say the effects. Why has the writer done it? To emphasise the natural beauty, emphasises Mr. Head's crass behaviour, showing his disgusted in attitude and how unappreciative he is, shows that he's got a critical and dismissive tone, and then it's contrasting the unique and special landscape um, with Mr. Head's behaviour. Um, so use that as a structure, and you do one paragraph like that for paragraph one, and the exact same structure again for paragraph two. So looking at writing it then, here are some effect sentences that you can use to help you show that you're about to give the effect. This shows that, this may demonstrate that, this implies that, this may mean that, the effect of this is, the effect of this image is to display that, blah, blah, blah. Use these sentences to help you when you're writing. Here's a little bit of extra help if you're really stuck. Um, this here should all be one paragraph, so don't have it as four different paragraphs. This is all one paragraph. Um, so if you need this, then please do pause the screen here to help you as you're writing. Okay, um, and now we're on to actual writing time. Um, so please give yourself 40 minutes. Don't go over. Um, aim to write for about 20 minutes per paragraph. Don't use e-dictionaries. Um, be really strict with yourself. Try and put yourself in exam conditions. The section you need to write this in for the worksheet is here. So one paragraph for paragraph A and one paragraph for paragraph B. Okay, um, so please pause here and get right in. Okay, um, so now that you've finished writing, I want you guys to give each other some feedback. Um, so you're going to give each other three things that your partner did well and three things that they could improve. And I want you also to highlight, like I did, your partner's overall effect sentence, their three images, um, their connotations and their effect. So you should highlight their work so that it looks like this, basically. Who are your partners? These are going to be your partners all throughout the time that we have off, so time to make some new friends. Um, so make sure that you get in touch with your partner, please. So you're going to give each other some feedback um, and you're going to make a note of it here. Um, so make sure that you write the feedback in there. Okay, um, and then the final step is after you've got partner feedback, you are going to improve your work and then you're going to upload it onto Teams by Tuesday evening at 8 o'clock. So, as a reminder then of the things that you guys need to have done, you need to have completed this whole worksheet, including the notes section. You need to have written your response. You need to have given partner feedback 
improve your work and then submit it onto Teams by Tuesday at 8pm. Any questions, please let me know. I will be online. I am available to help. Um, see you all for the next lesson. Bye-bye.